Hey, how's it going, everybody? Jeremy here. We're in Psalm 28 today. So let's read it and let's talk about it, okay? It says this, To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Do not drag me off with the wicked, with the workers of evil, who speak peace with their neighbors while evil is in their hearts. Give to them according to their work and according to the evil of their deeds. Give to them according to the work of their hands. Render them their due reward, because they do not regard the works of the Lord or the works of his hands. He will tear them down and build them up no more. Blessed be the Lord. For he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exults, and with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. So this is a psalm of David, and David is saying, to you, O Lord, I call, right? He's crying out to the Lord, praying to the Lord. He's needing an answer. Uh, he knows that the Lord is his rock, and he's saying, be not deaf to me. He needs the Lord to hear him and to answer him and to help him. He says, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. You know, the idea of if you don't help, Lord, if you don't come through, if you don't stay faithful, uh, I'm not going to make it. Uh, and most likely what he's meaning is that he's going to be in, not in the grave, but in, the, in, in disgrace. He's needing the Lord to come through and help him through this time. He says, hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary, this prayer that he's um, in the middle of, um, this crying out to the Lord that he's in the middle of, look at this, he's praising in the middle of it. He's lifting up his hands to the Lord and he's, he's calling out for the Lord to come through. Because, uh, you know, if, if you've seen Christians before and them lifting up their hands or holding their hands out, um, whether whatever it, 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 it looks like to you, um, what the original posture was is surrender or the hands held out forward with open palms, uh, knowing that without the Lord um, giving to us as, the blessings that he does, we won't make it. We can't make it on our own. So David, as he's crying out to the Lord, he's also in a posture of worship and praise. Uh, he goes on to say, Do not drag me off with the wicked, with the workers of evil. So when we get into this verse, this is where we start to see the three hearts of Psalm 28. And, and so let, let's see what it says. It says He's saying, Do not drag me off with the wicked, with the workers of evil, who speak Peace with their neighbors while evil is in their hearts. Here's the first heart. Uh, evil is in the heart of man. Uh, there's none righteous, no, not one. That's what the Bible says. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, sin uh, pretty much means we've missed the mark. And so when we look at this, uh, we know that the, the human heart is capable of so much destruction. Without the redeeming aspect of God's work in our life, um, we could be something that we would not be proud of. And so when David is, is, is talking about these certain people, he's saying these don't, he's calling for the Lord not to drag him away with the workers of evil. Now these workers of evil, they, they do something kind of specific where it says they, they speak peace with their neighbors, all the while underneath the surface they have evil in their hearts. Uh, the the two-faced people, the people who you think are your friends, uh, but secretly behind your back, they are not. We've all experienced stuff like this. The heart of man is very deceitful. The heart of man untethered to the creator is capable of so much destruction. So that was the first heart, okay? In verse 4, it says, Give to them according to their work, and according to the evil of their deeds. Give to them according to the work of their hands. Render them their 
due reward. Uh, when you when you look at this, um, we got to understand two things. You know, God gets glory by sinners repenting and turning to Him, and uh, the new life, the new creation, the the new walk as a Christian, where we're bringing glory to God. But God also gets glory in the righteous judgment of unrepentant sinners. And I pray that that's not you today. I pray that you're not one of those. You're pr- I pray that you know Christ. I pray that you'd call out to him as your Lord and Savior. But the fact of the matter is, is that God is holy and just. God is love, of course, for sure. But you have to be just if you are to be loving. Uh, and so to be just, there has to be that that rendering. There has to be that that sacrifice for the the sin that we all deal with. And Jesus has paid that penalty on the cross. He was the the righteous sacrifice. He was the spotless lamb. He was the one and the only one that was able to take our sins to that cross so long ago. And he paid that ultimate price uh, for us. The, The due reward that we all deserve for a life filled with sin, um, sin uh, equals death. And so when we think about that and we know that, that Christ took our death on the cross, uh, we can understand that, that justice has been dished out. The justice for my sin has been dished out. The justice for your sin, if you're in Christ, has been dished out. And in verse 5 it says, Because they do not regard the works of the Lord or the works of his hands. So the, these wicked people who have evil in their heart, who are two-faced, who on the on the outside seem like they're they're sheep's, but on the inside they're ravenous wolves. Um, these people, uh, they they keep doing malicious deeds, and it goes on to say, and they do not regard the works of the Lord or the works of His hands. So Romans one talks about this when Paul is speaking um, about the unbeliever. He says this, and this is in in chapter 1, but starting at verse 20. He says, For his invisible attributes, talking about God, for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world, in the things that have been made, so that they are without excuse. And now listen to this. This is verse This is verse 21 of chapter 1. It says, For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. These God deniers, these people who have lived a life of, of wickedness, unrepentant sin is what it would be. They're in rebellion against God. Uh, David is not wanting to be wrapped up with that. He's not wanting to be swept away by that kind of thinking, that kind of ideology. And so he's calling out to God to save him, to be, to hear his prayer, to uh, hear his pleas, uh, to come through and 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 bring him out of that, to save him from that. See, it goes on in the end of verse five. He says, "He will tear them down and build them up no more." <laughs> we all stand before God one day. And I, I'm praying for you that you would stand before God uh, knowing Christ and realizing the ultimate uh, ransom that was paid, the ultimate penalty that was paid in, in, on your behalf. When we stand before the Father, He sees Jesus in us. He sees the payment that's paid for us. And in verse 6 it says, Blessed be the Lord, for He has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy so he starts off this prayer, he starts off this cry to the Lord by saying, uh, don't, don't be silent, um, don't, be, don't turn a deaf ear to me, hear me, don't wrap me up in these, these wicked people around me, don't uh, have me fall away, don't let me be in disgrace uh, even, either by my actions or by their actions. And he says, um, blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas. He starts off wanting the Lord to hear, and he starts to wrap up his prayer knowing that the Lord has heard him. Do you know when you pray that the Lord hears you? You might be like me and wonder, does this even matter? Is this even reaching his ears? 
Uh, the Bible says it does. The Bible says that he hears, he, that he doesn't turn a deaf ear to us. He hears what we're going through and he, he's there for us through it. He's helping us through it. And he is the strength that we have to do it. And this is where we see heart number two, where it says this in verse seven, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts and I am helped. Wow. Wow. In him, my heart trusts and I am helped. It's this trusting in the Lord, but not just trusting in the Lord. That's this is a cliche that people say, uh, but but it's it's not though. When you when you think about like like Spurgeon has a quote about this verse that if you really believed what that verse said, that means that you could do anything. Uh, Spurgeon had the quote that said that if a piece of wheat had the strength of the Lord, it could hold up the world. And so when we think about the Lord is my strength and he's my refuge, do we really believe it? Do we really believe that he will get us through it? Or is this something that we just say? Uh, I'm guilty of this. I'm not trying to say that, that I'm, um, I'm any better at this certain thing. Like, like, I have these feelings when I pray. But if he's giving us the strength like he says he does, do we believe it? And do we walk in it, walk in that strength that he has given us? Because he says this, he says that he's giving us um, a strength and a shield. So not only has he given us the ability to handle business spiritually in our life, but he's also given us the protection um, from the enemy, from the wicked around us. You know, I, I've seen this, and, and this verse start, or this chapter starts off by talking about uh, God is my rock. Well, when you think about the rock, I mean, there's, there's so many different ways to use a rock. I mean, the, the cave inside of a mountain where you can hide during a hurricane, that's, that's your rock. Um, the mighty fortress built out of stone that you attack from, that's your rock. So your, the Lord's strength is not only in our protection, but the Lord's strength is in our victory as well. So that was the second heart. Now we go to the third heart where it says this, my heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. So we've seen the first heart, it's full of evil. We've seen the, the second heart, that it's trusting the Lord. And now the third heart, the third heart gives praise. It gives, uh, it exalts the Lord. It gives praise to him with song. Think about all the verses throughout the Bible. It says, praise the Lord with song. Sing to him a new song. And, and it says, the Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Uh, if you have the Holy Spirit, if you're a Christ follower, you are anointed. There's none anointed more than you. You're anointed. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are anointed. And it says, oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Save your people and bless your heritage. This is what the Lord does to us. He saves us and, and he blesses us. And then what's the reaction from that? Because when he saves us, he saves us from something. He saves us from that evil heart that has been there since our birth, that evil heart that's been there since the fall. He saves us from that heart. And then what do we do? What do we do when he saves us? We trust him. We trust him. And in, in trusting him, we are blessed. And so then what is the natural outcome of being saved and having trust in the Lord? The natural outcome is to praise him, to give him glory, to sing to him, to honor him and worship him. In the last verse, when it says, Oh, save your people and bless your heritage, be their shepherd and carry them forever. You know, not only does a shepherd provide and nourish, but there's times when the shepherd just needs to pick up the sheep and carry them. I know that the Lord has carried me through many things in my life. Has the Lord carried you? Is the Lord carrying you as we speak? I believe he is. I believe he's given us all such great blessings and he's given us all such a great salvation. Turn to Christ if you don't know him. Turn to Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Lord, 
Thank you so much for this psalm. Thank you for the fact that David experienced what we all experience, the fact that we could get wrapped up in wicked ways. We could let our, our heart lead us down bad paths. But Lord, you are, are faithful and strong. Lord, you save us and bless us. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us just like the shepherd who carries the sheep. I pray, Lord, that you would carry us, that you would mend us when we're broken, that you would feed us when we're hungry, that you would guide us when, guide us when we're lost. And, Lord, I pray that you would show us the way to walk uh, that honors you the most. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, I'll see you guys next week.